So we've come out here today, preach the Bible at this festival, Court Days. I want to remind you, Mount Sterling, that you have a court date with God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, that it is appointed unto a man once to die, and after this comes the judgment. What more could be done for you, Mount Sterling? Most of you are still in your sin on your way to hell. Might see you at church once a year. Might see you at church when your family member dies at the funeral. But God doesn't really matter beyond that. I just want to drink my beer, smoke my marijuana, and do what I want to do. The Bible says, turn from your sins and turn to God. Mount Sterling's under the wrath of God like every other city. Mount Sterling has sin in it. And the Bible says no sin will enter into the kingdom of God. You know there's no sin in Him. So how can you die a sinner and have hope in your death? And if you die a sinner, you're judged as a sinner. You go to hell as a sinner. If you die a saint, you're judged as a saint. You go to heaven as a saint. The football team, the saints, that's not what it's about. It's the saints of God, Christians, who follow and obey Jesus Christ. And if you die in that condition of obedience to God, you're accounted as a saint in His blood and justified and judged accordingly. But if you reject that, say, you know, F the church, F God, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to drink my beer, smoke my marijuana, do my math, my crack, my heroin. You die in your sins, you go to hell. The Bible says, wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And most people are going in that way. But straight, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life. And few find it with God. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. The carnal mind is enmity against God. But because there are hypocrites doesn't mean you should throw the baby out with the bathwater. There are some loving Christians. Few. There's few. But there are some. That's good. You see, stop it. Stop it! Turn from it! The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life, Romans 6, 23. What do you want? You want damnation or heaven? You want heaven or hell? Make your choice. Make your choice. To this church building, you think, oh, I go to church on Sunday. I prayed that prayer. I took care of that preacher. I did that 10 years ago. I prayed when I was a kid. Who are you now? Who are you now? Are you obeying God now? That's the key. If you're not obeying God now, you're still on your way to hell. So the Bible says that life is short. You only get one life. What do you... So what's up? Nothing? Yeah. I thought you had a camera. Oh, you do have a camera. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. I know how some people are, so I gotta have proof. Gotta have proof. To hell fire with all thy members, where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. Hey, we got a church right here, but they don't have nobody right up there. What do you mean? I mean, they up there need somebody to preach to them. We got somebody right here in this church. Well, okay. That's First fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, then we're on the same team, so I'm going to stay here and labor with you. The Bible says I, I, I that the wages of sin. See, Christians today, they don't even want the Bible preached in public. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. Hey, sir, read your Bible. One Bible, one interpretation.
So we've come out here today, preach the Bible at this festival, Court Days. I want to remind you, Mount Sterling, that you have a court date with God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, that it is appointed unto a man once to die, and after this comes the judgment. In 2 Corinthians 5.10, the Bible says we must all appear before the judgment seat of God to give an account of the deeds done in your body, whether it was good, whether it was bad. In fact, Jesus Christ warned of judgment day, court day for Mount Sterling, Kentucky. So much so that he sent his son to die for this people in this city that you might not perish but have everlasting life. So you need to be reminded and fearful of your court date with God because it's not just today that we celebrate laws and prisons and justice, but our system of laws, prison, and justice is founded on the government of God. Our laws uphold His kingdom. And He has a law. And if you're a sinner today, you're under the judgment of the law, worthy of death and hell. And Christ has come to save you from your sins and to set you free and to give you a new heart and a new life. So this celebration from the 1700s Court day. I want to remind you of court day with God. Because you get one life and then you die and stand before God and give an account of your life for everything you've done, every action you've committed, every thought of your heart, every single thing, woman. You'll give an account of your life to God and stand before Him. But mockers will abound in this time. Oh, in the final days of human history, mockers would reign. This country is led by whoremongers, drunkards, sodomites. And God is calling you to turn and live to find hope through the gospel. What more could be done for you, Mount Sterling? Most of you are still in your sin on your way to hell. Might see you at church once a year. Might see you at church when your family member dies at the funeral. But God doesn't really matter beyond that. I just want to drink my beer, smoke my marijuana, and do what I want to do. The Bible says, turn from your sins and turn to God. Mount Sterling's under the wrath of God like every other city. Mount Sterling has sin in it. And the Bible says no sin will enter into the kingdom of God. You know there's no sin in Him. So how can you die a sinner and have hope in your death? That's why Christ came to die 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary, shedding His red blood for all kinds of people so that everyone who repents, turns from your sin, believes the gospel, and perseveres to the end, has hope and everlasting life. So I just want to remind you of what you already know. You're going to die one day and stand before God. You're going to have a court date, court day with God. And most of you don't care. Many of you don't care about your court date with God. Don't care about righteousness. Don't care. Uh, you say, you know, F God, uh, F the church. F the police, this attitude today of America, rebellious. The Bible says the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is everlasting life. And He gives it to those, the gift to those who love Him. You know what Jesus said? They who love me 
Keep my commandments. So when I come to Mount Sterling and there's a lot of drunkenness, a lot of drugs, a lot of sexual promiscuity, I know the love of God is not here. I know you don't love God. And that's why I've come to preach to you to turn from your sin. This might be your last chance before your personal court date with God. For the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It's appointed unto a man once to die. And after this comes the... Can anyone fill in the blank? Comes the judgment. The judgment of your life. And if you die a sinner, you're judged as a sinner, you go to hell as a sinner. If you die a saint, you're judged as a saint, you go to heaven as a saint. The football team, the saints, that's not what it's about. It's the saints of God, Christians, who follow and obey Jesus Christ. And if you die in that condition of obedience to God, you're accounted as a saint in His blood and justified and judged accordingly. But if you reject that, say, you know, F the church, F God, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to drink my beer, smoke my marijuana, do my math, my crack, my heroin. You die in your sins, you go to hell. The Bible says, wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And most people are going in that way. But straight, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life. And few find it. Are you one of the few that find it? God is not far from any one of you. His commandments are not far from any one of you. If you don't do what you know you should, it's because you're rebellious against the government of God. Is that alcohol? No. Nope. Praise nope. the Lord. That's yeah, good. Shame on you, sinner. Shame on you. Shame on you, sinner. Hush your mouth, sinner. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Many of you say, F God. F God. I'm just a monkey. I was from a monkey. F God. F holiness. Oh, I'm just a monkey. I can do what I want to do. You're made in the image of God. His stamp is on every cell of your body. Intelligent design, DNA. God has pinned you from the dirt of the ground and believed into your nostrils the breath of life. He gave you His law written on your heart, leaving you and me without excuse. You know your obligations to God. It's to love Him and love your neighbor. But whenever you're sinning, you're not loving yourself, loving God, loving your neighbor. Whenever you're watching pornography, whenever you're getting drunk, whenever you're sleeping around, whenever you're doing your drugs, you're not obeying God. In fact, that's the carnal mind. And the carnal mind is enmity or war with God. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. The carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed will it be. If your highest attainment in life is the Friday night bar, is the Saturday night club, if your highest attainment in life is your high you get on the weekend, then I'm here to call you out of your darkness. Awake, awake, wake up Mount Sterling, Kentucky, because you have a court date with God. In fact, the Bible says it is promised a court date before God. Being a nice American doesn't get you a pass. Being a nice, uh, well-meaning citizen doesn't get you a pass. Going to church on Sunday isn't a free pass. Reading your Bible isn't a free pass. You've got to turn from your sin, put down your weapons of war, and obey God. You need to be saved from the inside out, washed in the heart, and cleansed and made new. The way you get that is to change your mind. Change your mind about sinning. 
change your mind about being a drunkard, change your mind about doing drugs, change your mind about rebelling against God, change your mind about living your own life, and fear God and turn to Him. Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, If any man will come after Me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow Me daily. Most of you have never so much as sacrificed five minutes for God. And you went to church your whole life. This area is full of hypocrite Christians. Hypocrites. And God is calling you out. But because there are hypocrites doesn't mean you should throw the baby out with the bathwater. There are some loving Christians. Few. There's few. But there are some. That's good. You see... Stop it! Stop it! Turn from it! The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life. Romans 6.23 What do you want? You want damnation or heaven? You want heaven or hell? Make your choice. Make your choice. Most of you look to this church building you think, Oh, I go to church on Sunday. I prayed that prayer. I took care of that preacher. I did that ten years ago. I prayed when I was a kid. Who are you now? Who are you now? Are you obeying God now? That's the key. If you're not obeying God now, you're still on your way to hell. Mark chapter 8, verse 36. What is a man profited? What have you gained if you gain the whole world and go to hell and lose your own soul? What have you gained? You have your five day a week job. You've got your nice little family. You've got your guns. You've got your fun stuff. What have you gained if you die lost and go to hell? You've wasted your life. Don't waste your life. YOLO! You only live once. And after this comes the judgment. Your court date. Court date, sir. You better get ready. Court date with God. One life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. So the Bible says that life is short. You only get one life. What do you... So what's up? Nothing? Yeah. I thought you had a camera. Oh, you do have a camera. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. I know how some people are. So I got to have proof. Got to have proof. What church you from down here? I, I live about an hour away. Where um, at? Ashland. Also, Paul, we're from Aurora, Indiana. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm in Kentucky. I believe what you're saying, man. The times are, the times are really messed up. Right. This is a joke shirt for my buddy, so. Say, so made you wear it. Yes, today he told me he bought it for me in Florida on vacation. He made me wear it. Look. So did, did you lose a bet or something? Yeah. What was not, your bet? Be over here, but he got it for me for down there. Yeah. Look, he's gonna take a picture. All right. Cool. All there you go. There you go. Right there. Right there. Yeah, here you go. Look, I need that same pose. Look, he's, he's hiding. I want you to get Oh, I was blocking the shirt. I was blocking the shirt. One, two, three. All right. That whole group over there? You see the guy in the red shirt behind him? He's hiding. Yeah. That's the guy that made me wear it today. Okay. He bought for me. But love you, brother. Okay. God bless you. You too, brother. Obey him. Do his will. I try my best, brother. I really do. Okay, good. Finish well. Yeah. I just heard um, from a, a funeral I was just at. Bible stands for uh, basic instructions before yes, leaving Earth. Exactly. Yeah. Is that perfect or what? I like that. Yes. yes. I really like that. Oh yes. Yeah. Very true. And Most people yeah, don't read the instructions. That's the first time that I heard that. Right. Ever. Yeah. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. That's true. Huh? 
take take Love care. You, yeah, thank you. Be safe and try to get that shirt off as soon as possible. Yes. Blame him. Lee. Lee Irv, that's his name, right there. Thank you, brother. I'm not Danny McMurray now. I'm, yeah. I'm glad what you do. Okay. More people need that. Yeah. Serious. Love you. Thank you. <laughs> One day. One day. One day, your heart rate is going to increase. Your blood pressure is going to drop. You're going to start sweaty palms. You're going to start realizing it's hard to breathe. And then before you know it, you breathe your last breath. No more beer. No more marijuana. No more promiscuous sex. No more sin. And you die and stand before God on your court date with him and if you're not ready if you're not loving Christ if you die in your sin you're not ready for your court date and I just want you to be ready for your court date thank you so if I want you to be ready I'm going to encourage you to run from your sin run from what kills you run from what separates you from God for nothing can separate you from God but sin. Isaiah chapter 59 says, Your sins have separated you between you and God that He will not hear your prayers. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. His ears are open to their prayers. But the face of God is against them that do evil. Is God frowning on your life? are smiling on your life. What's your life like? Oh, what's your life like? Think about your day-to-day -day actions, your day-to-day -day thoughts. Who are you living for? If it's me, 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 my family, my kids, my wife, my dog, my cat, my job, you're not a Christian. The Bible says you live for God alone. Christ alone. And the Scripture calls you out of darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 that Christ is coming back in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel. Are you obeying the gospel, college students? Most likely not. Are you obeying the gospel? Most likely not. And if you're not obeying the gospel, the Bible says that Christ is coming back on your court date in flaming fire. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9. When's the last time your preachers preached on hell fire. In fact, Jesus said in Mark chapter 9, verse 43 to 47, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It would be better for you to enter into heaven, maimed, halt, or blind, than into hell fire with all thy members where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched hey we got a church right here but they don't have nobody right up there what do you mean i mean th they up there need somebody to preach to them we got somebody right here in this church well okay that's Appreciate fine it. okay yeah yeah all right well then we're on the same team so i'm going to stay here and labor with you the Bible says that the wages of sin. See, Christians today, they don't even want the Bible preached in public. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. Hey, sir, read your Bible. One Bible, one interpretation. Read your Bible. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 36, He that has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life, the wrath of God abides on you. 
Joe in 336. Romans 2 5. After your hard and unrepentant heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. You guys have a fake Jesus. Oh, he's not going to judge my life. He sees the blood of Jesus over me. The Bible says he sees your works. He knows your works. Every beer you guzzle, every drug you do, every day of rebellion against God, every day you go your own way, He sees you for who you are and how you're living. And He's going to judge you for you at the judgment seat of Christ. That's a problem for many of you because most of you are on the broad road leading to destruction. But straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life. And few people find it. You got your churches today that preach you're saved in your sins. Preach that you can go to heaven while you're living like the, set, the devil. You got Christians today blowing whistles so you can't hear the gospel. Christianity in America has fallen! Has fallen! Your pastors preach for money. That's why they won't preach on your sin. All your pastors say, you're fine as you are. You don't have to change. Just stay the way you are. Die as you are and God will just forgive. God has a government. God has laws. He has a court date settled. And if you die guilty, He by necessity of the government must judge you guilty. God loves every sinner that went to hell today. Every sinner that died last night and went to hell, Jesus loves them. Hell burns with the love of God. God's love made hell. God's love made His law. Hell is not the problem. God's law is not the problem. It's the wicked in heart. It's those who live for themselves. It's those who met, live for I, me, myself, I, and me only. And the good news is, there is potential for you to be saved from your sin. Matthew 1, 21, the Bible says, Jesus Christ is a Savior from your sins. That doesn't say the guilt of them. It says from the practice. Free! He wants to set you free from sin, give you hope of everlasting life, make you a new creature. The Bible says they that are born again, old things pass away and all things become new. But why when you prayed your prayer, you keep sinning? Why when you prayed your prayer, you keep going to the bar? You keep smoking marijuana? Keep going to the inappropriate websites on the computer? If you loved God, if you feared your sin, you would love Him and obey God and do His will. Jesus said in John 14, 21, He that has my Father's commandments and keeps them, He is the one that loves me. But most of you don't love God. Most of you love your sin. I'm in enemy territory. And the Bible says that Christ is coming in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the Gospel. 2 Thessalonians 1.9 When's the last time your little preacher at your little Baptist church preached that Scripture? When's the last time he preached on sin and the wages of it is death? Many of your churches are just rock band shows, smoke machines, light shows, uh, uh, entertainment is what you want. Give me something to tickle my emotions. You need to have your emotions tickled with the fear of God and do His will. But the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no God. Are you a fool today? Do you reject God? 
Oh, you're, you got a lot of hatred in your heart, woman. Killing your body with your cigarettes. Sinners are selfish. You get drunk, intoxicating your body with toxins. Poisoning your body with carcinogens. Poisoning your body with sin. Filling your eyes with lust, with pornography. Sinners are full of carnality. Opposed to the life of the fear of God. Opposed to a life of self-control and the fear of the Lord. So I've come to lovingly persuade you. I've come to lovingly persuade you. Can't you feel the love about the wages of your sin, which is death, and that you need to fear God or you're going to die lost and go to hell. Heck, most churches today teaches there is no hell. Jesus said in Mark chapter 9, hell fire. He said, they that die lost, go to hell. The loving Jesus preached on hell fire for every drunkard, every fornicator, every partier, every reveler every sinner hell that's why christ died to save you he died to save you from hell save you from your sins save you from the damnation you deserve and if you die lost in your sin we say amen to the judgment of god amen you have hope god's law is on your heart you know you're selfish turn from your sin and give your hope and heart to God. Put your faith in Him for real. Stop playing games with the Lord. That's why the Bible says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that you will also reap. If you sow to the flesh, you will of the flesh reap destruction. But if you sow to the Spirit, you reap life and peace. I want you to have life and peace today. But many of you are saying, hey, I'm going to live my own life and pray that prayer when I'm about to die. Who told you you would get that opportunity? Hell is full of people. Hell is full of people that regret wasting their days. Wasting their life. This isn't hell. Where's the flames of fire? This isn't hell. Look at how nice it is to live here. Jesus said that hell is a place of weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth where the fire is never quenched, where the worm never dies, where you sorrow all the day, where you cry out for water and no one answers, where you cry out for salvation and it's too late. Hell is waiting on Mount Sterling, Kentucky. The Bible says hell enlarges itself every day. That hell's mouth is never full. So I'm just begging you to wake up while you have time and space. Turn to the Lord God and be saved. Come to know His grace and His mercy found in the cross. The Bible says in Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all of us teaching us to live sober, righteous, and godly in this present age. If you're living like the devil on the highway to hell, if you're living like Satan with your mind on your money and your money on your mind, if you're living like Satan, you're not like Christ. And the Bible says, as He is, so are we in this world that we put on the righteousness of Christ that you put off the old man and put on the new. Mount Sterling, your court date's coming. I'm here to remind you. Here's your sign. Many of you have been praying, God, if you're real, give me a sign. Here's your sign. Pray in that prayer. Here's a sign, sir. No excuse now. No excuse now. Here's your sign, Mount Sterling. You thought you had an excuse. You don't have one. Here it is. They that have turned the world upside down have come unto you. And I've come to call this city that is full of sin, full of sinners, to repent and turn back to God. Get back in church. Fear God. 
Read your Bible. You fell from grace. You've turned from God. Now the bar is full Friday and Saturday night and the church is empty on Sunday morning and Wednesday night. And you say, oh, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven, but I like to hang out with the buddies on Friday night. Stop lying to yourself. The Bible says that the drunkard will not inherit the kingdom of God. James chapter 4, verse 4. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself the enemy of God. Who do you want to be friends with? The world or God? Do you want God to be your enemy or your friend? Have you been saved? Yes. Choose you this day who you will serve. Awake unto righteousness. Put down your heroin, your meth, your crack cocaine, your marijuana. Put down your pornography. Put down your beer, your jello shots, your Captain Morgan, your beer funnels. Put down your sin and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I know your hearts. I know the gospel of this city. Drunkenness, drugs, and sin. And Christ has come to save you. And you don't care. You say, oh, we're fine. We're a God... Look, there's a church right there. We're a God-fearing city. You only get one chance at life. Only one chance. And by the time today is over, you're closer to death than you were when you woke up. You only get one life. Closer to your court date. Closer to your judgment from God. Closer to that moment before Him. But now the Gospel of America, kill your babies in the womb. By the time today is over, 3,000 babies will have been killed in the womb. America's under the wrath of God. The wrath of God. Wicked. Wicked. Shame on you. Wicked. The Bible says that if you kill, you are a murderer. If you kill, you are a murderer at heart. Shame on you. And America is under the wrath of God, under the judgment of the Lord. You say, oh, it's their right to choose. Is it my right to choose to kill you? Obviously not. But you say, let's kill the least of these. Let's kill the least of these. Shame on you. I'm shaking your head. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. Shame on you. Not only do you have murdering of children and none of you care, but you have homosexuals that run this country. Pride parades. You know what the Bible says? Pride goes before a fall. And a haughty spirit before destruction. Guess what's most viewed on the internet? I don't even have to tell you. Don't even have to tell you. America is under the judgment of God. You spend more money on beer than you do on missions. More money on yourself than you care about your neighbor. You say, oh, I'm a loving sinner. I'm a loving person. I love God. When's the last time you did anything for God? When's the last time you did anything for Jesus? You barely even get up in the morning for God. You barely even open up your Bible for God. Most of you don't even open up your Bible for God. Most of you don't go to church. Most of you don't care about God. And you're the very ones that Christ is coming back in flaming fire to take vengeance on. You're the very ones that are going to hell. And you need to wake up and repent and turn back to God that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. I want you to be refreshed and healed. But unless you turn from your sin, that's the problem. You don't get Jesus in your sin too. Choose one or the other. You don't get to live for you in Jesus too. Make a choice. Turn from your sin. Put down yourself. Lay yourself at the foot of the cross and say, God, I fear you. Ah, but you don't fear God. That's why I'm here to convince you to fear God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10, 
verse 27. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 27, Do not fear the one which can destroy your body, but afterwards can do no more. But yes, rather, fear him who has power to destroy your soul and your body in hell fire. That's Jesus' words. Matthew chapter 10, verse 27. If you die in your sin, you're going to be destroyed in hell fire. Yeah, really, sinner. Really. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life. Mount Sterling, Kentucky, you have a choice today. You want life or death? What do you want? What do you want? Choose you this.